Shall we open our Bible this morning to the book of Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 14. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 14. For the weapons of our warfare are not cannon, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every item that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Verse 6. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you is the weapon in use. Mighty God of heaven, today we thank you for what again you have a store for your children. We have simply come to your presence today to get all you have for us to have. As we open our mind to the Lord, let your word proceed in its maximum voluminous content of your power. Let every life today exposed under the x ray of your word. Be delivered from chains of darkness. Let liberty be given. Let freedom be given. Let equipment be given. Let understanding of God come. Let wisdom come. Let your people be enlarged. Do not forget me today. As I speak your word, let me be particular. I, I am an entire household of these great blessings you prepare for your children today. In Jesus' name, we have declared is the weapon in you amen and one question that might come to your mind might be that what is he talking about is the weapon in use for what why, why the need for weapon as a christian and what is the weapon useful for all right it's simply the weapon i'm referring to here is a spiritual weapon a christian weapon which is used for warfare as testified to by the scripture and the scripture says a book i've just read second corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 to 14 look at verse 4 there it says for the weapon of our warfare and not canna that means the weapon is useful for warfare hallelujah now the question will be why warfare why this message hallelujah okay i want to define warfare as distinguished from war so warfare is not exactly the same definition as war war is different from warfare war is a state of harmed conflict between different nations or states or different groups within a nation or state whereas warfare is engagement in all the activities involving war the engagement in 
or the activities involved in war. Okay. That is to say that a Christian does not create enemies for himself to fight, but are involved in a warlike activities against the enemies. I'm going to get, get that clear very well. Christians do not fight war. Listen very carefully. Christians do not create war. Christians do not create war or fight battle because the battle has been won by Christ. Now, listen carefully. But we are engaged in warlike activities useful as a self-defense. Everybody say self-defense. So we are not to be creating enemies and creating war, but we have warlike activities. All right? So we have been given weapons of warlike that to be able to engage in warlike activities against every fiery dart of the enemy. Hallelujah. I'm going to look at that carefully. Christians do not create war. Why? I look at the Bible first. I'm going to emphasize that in the Bible verse here. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Because that would disabuse our mind from this attitude of we, whenever we gather, we always think that we are going to be all, it's only going to be all about the enemies. It's all about creating enemies and then saying some prayers that suggest that we are kind of attracting enemy rather than uh, allowing God to have his way. Hallelujah. So that needs to be clear. Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. They say, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. So Christians, they do not go out there and start creating enemy. They are peacemakers. They are blessed because they are peacemakers. And when you have a, a Christian group, when you have a Christianity in a nation, it further the success of that nation. You say, pray uh, that for the peace of Jerusalem. Those that love it shall prosper. It means that God brings Christian, Christianity to the world, not only to get to heaven, but to transform that environment. Hallelujah. Say, so you are the light of the world. The city set upon the hill cannot be hidden. So we do not create enemies. We do not create war. Neither do we fight battle. But rather, we are having weapons that engages a warlike activities as for us as a self-defense against the enemies. Now listen carefully. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 27. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Christ has already won the battle. So we are not trying to create enemy. We are not trying to win a victory. The victory has been won already. All right? Very clear. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. So the death of Christ on the cross and his resurrection has offered us a victory over the enemy. But there is one thing that has core responsibility that we need to undertake. And that is why God is using me today to expose you to that. Hallelujah. Even though Christ has won the battle for us, we are victorious, but our responsibility we need to take. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's like a soldier in protection of a community. All right? So when you are going to be protected by a soldier, you are not going to stand in front of the soldier. You know, the soldier has to be in the front, then you find a very careful place to hide at the back of the soldier so that they can defend you against the enemy. So the responsibility is to do what is right. Praise the Lord. Stand right at the back of the soldier who is confronting the world, the enemy on your behalf, to protect you. And that's what Christ has already done. He has got the battle won for us. And so right now, we need to take some responsibility. And the responsibility is making use of the weapons that he has fought and won and to give to us. Hallelujah. Now, you now ask one question. He said, why self-defense? Why self-defense? If we say that uh, Christians do not create war or fight battle because Christ has won the battle, for them hallelujah 
So we are now engaged in a warlike activity useful as a self-defense. So now the question is, why self-defense? Now, listen carefully. Enemies are already existing for any Christian, even before he is born again. Hallelujah. These enemies are spiritual. They are not to be seen as physical. These enemies are spiritual, which possibly can make use of any human body, any flesh, anyone that is born of human to launch attack against any Christian. Hallelujah. Even sometimes they can make use of animal. So in different form, the enemy can take all different aspects to attack a Christian. So a Christian already have enemy. That's why a Christian need to uh, engage the weapon of warfare to defend himself. Even though the battle has already been won by Christ. But Christ gave us responsibility to engage the weapon of warfare to be able to defend ourselves. Now listen carefully. In the world we are right now, physical war, all right, for example, has been won. There's some many countries that were enslaved in the past, you know, and then they got their victory. Now, when they get their victory, they have their own self-governance and sovereignty, and so they have their own mili military, and they have their own weapon and instrument against any form of attack that may be launched outside that nation. Hallelujah. So the same way too, we have, Christ has won the victory for us. So we have weapon ready for a self-defense in case, should in case anyone try to rise against us. And that is the fiery death of the enemy. Enemies are already existing for a Christian even before he's born again. These enemies are spiritual. They are not physical. Which possibly can make use of any flesh, any human being. Hallelujah. Now, let me separate this. Right in the physical world, we have situations where we are confronted by physical enemy and those who present themselves as enemy. There's a way, there's a law appropriate to take care of that in the, in the community. Somebody, for example, come to your home and try to, you know, try to break into your home and want to shoot you. You have, of course, laws that are appropriate in place to be able to raise a defense against such so today we're not talking about physical enemy here we're talking about spiritual enemy that can make use of human being or animal hallelujah to be able to attack you so we are told to stand to defend ourselves even though christ has won the battle for us so you've got to listen carefully because ignorance sometimes can kill many christians today they go in ignorance and in the name of being gentle but not really gentleness and then they kind of be subservient to the devil. And devil keep on oppressing them. It's possible for a Christian to be oppressed. When a Christian is lacking knowledge, there's a possibility that he could be oppressed. My people die because they lack knowledge. So knowledge gives for the freedom to engage with what liberty we've been given. With what responsibility uh, we've been given. So we cannot be ignorant. It's not ignorant of the word of God. It's not an excuse. Devil doesn't see that as an excuse and refuse to attack us. In fact, it's, it's a great advantage for him if we are ignorant of what we need to know. And he will launch attack. You see, Christians are being attacked. It's possible. If we are ignorant of some things, we may possibly be attacked. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Right? Why are we having a weapon that is engaging warlike activities? It is because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, right? Against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual oaths of wickedness in the heavenly places. All right. So our battle is not simply about human being. Our battle is simply about devil and his delegated agents, which are demons. Hallelujah. And the reason is very simple. The reason is very simple. Because they hate Jesus. They hate God. They hate the Holy Spirit. And because you are born again, you become a Christian, a follower of Christ. 
power and principalities will hate you. Luke chapter 6, verse 22. Luke chapter 6, verse 22. Say, Blessed are you when you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. So it's possible that you are attacked, you are hated. Not those who hate you that has a problem, but the problem is from Satan. Because right from the beginning, God has been hated, and any of his children or followers are at the same time they are hated. Jesus even said, said so clearly, he said, If I'm hated, you'll be hated likewise. So our instrument weapon to be that is warlike in activity are meant to engage defense against this hatred, against this reviling from Satan, against this devilish act, against this wickedness from the principalities and power. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 11. Because we'll be looking at the scripture clearly. Because nothing shall proceed from this altar that, sh that shall be by common sense. Everything will be taken from the scripture and the Holy Ghost himself will put interpretation into your ears. Hallelujah. I'm not going to speak on this altar without giving you the Bible reference. Because today's Christianity, many of us are confused because people have had so many words that they found that it's not working for them simply because those words are not taking their ground, their roots from the scripture. So anything we must say here, I declare to you, and the hear must hear that will stay permanent in your heart has to come from the scripture. Uh, it's a lot of discipline to keep to the scripture. All right? I could go around and begin to speak philosophy. Very easy to say. But the word of God must be taken because the Holy Ghost must be allowed to speak by himself to his people. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 uh, to 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord Listen carefully. My brethren, be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. And in the power of his might. So a Christian has been commanded to be strong in the Lord. So it's possible after Christ has won the battle for us, we refuse to be strong. That's why Christian could be attacked. See, that Christian could be oppressed because they refuse to be strong in the Lord. Okay? Those that know their God shall be strong. And what? And shall do exploit. That is a very important for us to know that being strong in the Lord gives us the readiness to be able to defend ourselves against every fairy darts of the devil. Alright? Verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. So devil as wise, despite Christ winning the battle for us, devil will still come time to time to manipulate us, to kind of tell us that Christ has not yet won the victory, to engage us. So therefore, we've got to be strong in the Lord and take this armory, hallelujah, the weapon of warfare, to be able to cast the devil and his agent to where they belong. Hallelujah. Are you ready to go with me this morning? All right. What are these Christian weapons? What are these Christian weapons? These are the things we're going to clearly emphasize. Because people are, some people are very confused about this. How do I engage this weapon? What are actually these weapons of warfare? Hallelujah. Okay, the weapon of warfare is not a physical gun. <laughs> Hallelujah. The weapon of warfare is not yelling around your place. All right? The weapon of warfare is deeper than that. Hallelujah. Okay. If enemies, if enemy, if enemy trying to go against us or sin against us, we can go ahead, a physical being, talk to the person, you know, make sure that you resolve with the issue with him. And if it's not resolvable, Christ told us that we should consult the elders to, to, to deal with it. And if there's no people that can help out in the situation, you have to leave the person as if treat him as an unbeliever, as somebody who doesn't know anything about God. So you've got to leave him the way he is and just move forward. Hallelujah. So it is, it is okay to go ahead and try to reconcile with people, but above all, that is this thing that you've got to do. Hallelujah. Engaging the weapon of warfare. Ha <laughs> ha. What are these Christian weapons? Second Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse 4 
uh, verse 4 to 6. It says, For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. Okay? The weapon is not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down argument and every item that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Hallelujah. So your obedience is to know, be conscious that you have a weapon of warfare. Your obedience is to know you need to go engage with the weapon of warfare. So when disobedience will fail, then this benefit will start coming on your behalf. Hallelujah. Okay. Being gentle as dove and being wise as serpent as a Christian. Matthew chapter 10 verse, uh, chapter 10 verse 16. Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as a sheep in the midst of wolf. Be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless as dove. How is that possible? By only bearing the weapon, spiritual weapon of warfare. How is it possible to be like uh, <laughs> gentle as dove? It means a fiery wolf around you that can consume and destroy. All right? But remember, we are also told to be wise as serpent. So our wisdom is in the bearing of the weapon of warfare. Spiritual weapon of warfare that we do not display publicly. Hallelujah. We display them spiritually. We don't display them physically. We display them spiritually. And it goes ahead to be able to help us live our life as gentle as dove, even in the midst of wolves. Hallelujah. What are these weapons? Number one, forgive people. Refuse, but refuse to forgive devil or Satan or demon. Hallelujah. Forgive people, but refuse to forgive devil, Satan or demon. You address, reproof, and cast out devil if need be. Love people, be exercising compassion for them to be helped and to be saved. Make that clear, get that, that cleared out. They are all interwoven together and they are put in one uh, ident. Hallelujah. I'm going to repeat that again. Forgive people, but refuse to forgive devil, Satan, or demon. You go ahead and address, reproof, and cast out devil. Love people. Be exercising compassion for them in your exercising compassion for them. To be helped and to be saved. Hallelujah. It is so important to live in a community where you have all different types of issues and opinions. As a Christian, your weapon of warfare to be able to address every possible manipulation that might come from the devil through men. Number one, make sure that you understand that you are not fighting human beings. You're fighting the devil. You're going to have to clear that out. Don't let your relationship transcend to looking at everybody around you as devils. Okay? Do not do that. Because that itself can be a torment from, from Satan. Can be a manipulation of the, of, of, from the pit of hell. Because remember, what Bible says, when the way of a man pleases the Lord, he can make him and his enemy to live in peace. To live together in peace. Hallelujah. So, the issue is not about the physical being being used by the devil. The issue is about the devil and the physical being. Hallelujah. So, therefore, whenever anybody offends you, get ready to forgive so easily. Everybody say, forgive so easily. It's now, so look easy. at what the Lord said. He said, so forgive easy. our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So, it's a command from God. No matter what level of sin is sin against you, you need to learn to forgive. Hallelujah. You need to learn to forgive. And forgive has to be an attitude. Okay? Has to be a lifestyle. Has to be a day-to-day mm -hmm. -day character, attitude. It is not what you consult once in a blue moon. You must be ready to forgive. Hallelujah. But when you are ready to forgive, do not forget that devil, Satan, or demon must not be forgiven. It's more, it must be a must in your heart. 
I cannot forget the, forgive the devil, Satan or demon, in the life of this one. Uh, what, how, do you, how do you do that? You go into your corner and address the devil in the corner. Hallelujah. You see the situation of Jesus Christ. He actually addressed the demon openly. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the demon came around and entered into Peter. Praise the Lord. And Jesus was saying that he will suffer many suffering. He will be humiliated and then eventually he will, he will be killed. Uh, out of compassion of Satan. Hallelujah. And sometimes Satan can be very compassionate. compassionate. So Satan can bring things that are really very bad in a very good way. Hallelujah. So he came mm. and opened his mouth and said, Oh no. He rebuked Jesus Christ. He said, that cannot happen to you. And Jesus looked at him and said, Hey. He reproved him. Everybody say reprove him. He addressed the situation and reproved the devil in Peter. He said, get it behind me, Satan. Hallelujah. So, it's very yes. important for you, as you are forgiving people, do not be swift to be ignorant. Don't be swift to forgive the act of the devil. you got to address that act of the devil. Alright? Don't keep quiet. Somebody say you are not going to prosper. you got to know how to address back. In the name of Jesus Christ, devil, I will prosper. Hallelujah. I have to know how to address so Christianity doesn't mean closing your mouth, shutting yourself down, and being under the oppression of the devil. That is not what Christianity is. For you to have your weapon of warfare at work, your mouth also must be at work. Hallelujah. My mouth also must be at work. So you got to address. And if need be, you got to reprove. We also saw the situation of bad Jesus. <laughs> It will be sitting about you on the act of act of supposed to chapter 13 verse 6 to 12. Act of the opposed to chapter 13 for, from verse 6 to 12. When the bad Jesus trying to hinder, you know, just I mean the disciples don't go around and try to you know create an enemy. They don't go around creating enemy and try to attack people. No, they were just busy doing the work of the gospel. And here comes this bad Jesus man, okay? This uh Haley man, the sorcerer. It's, that's his other name, interpretation of his name. And uh, he came to hinder. Hallelujah. He came, I was, he came to hinder. He came to hinder the progress of the work of God in the hand of God's people. And what did Paul say? Paul resisted him. He addressed the situation. Hallelujah. Paul did not keep quiet. Hallelujah. He opened his mouth and addressed the situation. And he reproved him. Amen. Not only reproved, just rebook him actually. And then what happened? He blindfolded him temporarily. Hallelujah. Because sometimes, mm -hmm. you, if it need be that uh, the career of devil need to be silenced for a moment for him to experience salvation, that can be done. Hallelujah. Pray without mm -hmm. casting the person to hell or destroying his life. Or you say, oh, you want to kill him. Don't pray a prayer of killing people. You can, you can decide to discipline the person temporarily so that the person can be able to come to his senses. And give himself to Christ. Remember when, when uh, opposed to Paul too. When he was formerly Saul. When he was attacking the gospel. He was persecuting the gospel. Christ gave him a temporary blindness. Hallelujah. He, uh, he applied a weapon. And gave him a temporary blindness. That eventually led him to a complete giant. In faith. Hallelujah. So it is very important. As you are a Christian. To use the weapon you have been given. I have told you. The weapon is that. You should be able to forgive everybody human being freely, but do not forgive Satan. Do not shut your mouth. Hallelujah. Be ready to address the issue. Hallelujah. Be ready to rebuke the devil. And if possible, cast out the devil. I'm going to emphasize that also in the book of uh, uh, Ephesians, chapter 5. Praise the Lord. Chapter 5, verse 11. Fear chapter 5, verse 11. Say, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness, but rather reprove them. Amen. Don't play Christianity around like you don't know what you are doing. When you have any trace of enemy at work, be ready to open your mouth. Be ready to open your mouth and reprove. Hallelujah. Even though you can forgive the person, but ready to open your mouth and reprove. Ready to open your mouth and cast out the devil. I remember in the book of Mark, we are told, Mark chapter 16, we are told that the signs shall follow those who believe 
in his name in the name they shall what he went on and on i said they shall cast out devils hallelujah they shall cast out devils so you are not using your equipment that's why the devil keep oppressing it's very important for you to make use of this equipment as a child of god you christianity is not going around the street like a beggar right christianity is not going around the street behaving as if you have no father you are the father the creator of the heaven and the earth and your mouth must be clearly open to say what is right at the right time hallelujah you don't create enemy for yourself no but when the enemy rise amen you must be ready for a self-defense we saw that jesus doing that we also see saw paul opposed to paul disciples peter also did that we saw them doing the right thing amen everybody say doing the right thing hallelujah yeah. not love people be exercising compassion for them to be helped and to be saved hallelujah i'm going to back that up in the book of proverbs chapter, uh, chapter 25 verse 21 proverbs 25 21 to 22 says if your enemy is hungry give him bread to eat and if he's thirsty give him water to drink for so you will heap coal of fire on his head and the lord will reward you hallelujah so another weapon that you're going to use is a weapon of love hallelujah for anyone being used by the devil you have applied the weapon of love ready to accommodate them I mean, praise the lord but because because but make sure you do that at a distance do that at a distance because we are told not to associate with unfruitful work of the devil okay uh, they, they do that at a distance matthew chapter 9 verse 36 well when he saw matthew chapter, uh, chapter 9 verse 36 but when he saw the multitude he was moved with compassion for them because they were faint i was scattered abroad as sheep having no sheep. among these people that multitude of people that they were standing before christ there were demon possessed among them too hallelujah but jesus had compassion for them so when you are exercising a weapon of warfare you got to exercise love that is full of compassion helping people leading them up to being saved hallelujah that's very very important to exercise that weapon hallelujah number two what are these weapons of warfare living in peace with people as much as it lies in you okay you can't live with peace with all men hallelujah but as much as it lies in you you can live in peace with all men hallelujah not everyone will be pleased with your lifestyle but as much as the holy give, give you the capacity you're going to live peace in peace with all men praise the lord men of peace do not create war but they defend themselves against war Romans chapter 12 verse 18 Romans chapter 12 verse 18 to 21 if it is possible as much as depends on you live peaceably with all men verse 19 beloved do not avenge yourself but rather give place to rod for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord therefore if your enemy is hungry look at it so that means you know your physical enemy it's not devil i'm talking about the devil himself the demon himself i'm talking about the person being used by the devil right you found out to know maybe by revelation you got to know what we are told here is this we are told that we can afford to feed them when jesus christ was ministering people were coming from everywhere including them. some of them came for help remember the uh, mary magdalene he came to christ for help hallelujah and christ saw that he needed him he saw that he wanted christ and christ drove out seven evil spirits from him from her hallelujah that's what i'm talking about you have to be able to show compassion you have to be able to show love to them it is not if your that should not be the tattoo of your message about people who are, you're, maybe you are giving revelation to see someone who is possessed of the demon don't make that the tattoo of your message today in order to gain a, a, a sheep popularity of you knowing things hallelujah but you have to know once you're given a lot of knowledge all you need to do is to find a way to relate with that person in love and find a way to cast out the devil out of him or her. hallelujah are you listening to me if if does such a person take any step further that look like hindering god do not hesitate to stand like peter and paul and cast out the devil or rebook the devil hallelujah but you must show love to everybody and when we are told that christ has won the battle he has given us a protection automatic protection and in our aspect of the work is what i'm talking about here we have been protected no demon can take us no demon can overcome us 
but we must take the right perspective hallelujah to be able to enjoy what christ has done for us hallelujah amen, amen. number three amen. number three resist the devil by submitting to god resist the devil by submitting to god meaning live holy hallelujah you know the easier way to resist the devil is to submit to god hallelujah the easier way to resist the devil is to submit to god first peter chapter 5 verse 8 to 9 first peter chapter 5 verse 8 to 9 be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion full of devices full of tricks hallelujah seeking woman with the war verse 9 resist him steadfast in faith knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world now listen carefully james chapter 4 verse 7 james chapter 4 verse 7 how do you now resist the devil as we are told okay therefore submit to god and he followed this sentence resist the devil and he will flee from you hallelujah when you submit to god one thing will happen the devil will be automatically resisted hallelujah now live a life that god can instruct live a life that can be led by the holy spirit live a life that the holy ghost can have his way in live a life that the holy ghost can guide his steps trust in the lord with all your heart lean on your own understanding in your in all your ways acknowledge him he shall direct your path when the holy ghost is in charge directing your path that he that walketh in you to be able to will and do of, do of good pleasure you begin to see god himself coming your way and defending amen on your behalf it's very important to live a life a simply life of holiness is a total submission to god a simple way to define holiness is a cleanliness that results from a total submission to god when you do that it's an automatic resistance against the enemy praise the lord ephesians chapter 6 verse 14 ephesians 6 14 says stand therefore having gathered your waist with truths amen gather with what with truths right having put on the breastplate of righteousness that if you look at the beginning of that verse ephesians chapter 6 it's talking about there upon you the old armor of god amen so the armor of god is actually righteousness hallelujah that is living a life that is that is in semblance with god that is an automatic resistance against the enemy number four hallelujah number four what are these people your prayer and supplication should be rich in the word of god praise to god worshiping of god and your prayer must be in faith hallelujah praise the lord right you don't pray anyhow the prayer has to be specific direct okay address issues not trying to pray general prayer because demon devil do not understand general prayer if you see the attitude of christ in his ministry when he addressed devil or demon it addressed him cleanly and clearly his word was very clear so was, was paul peter and other disciples they have clean clear conversation with god to fight on their behalf so as a christian you can't simply just pray generally you are not because you are afraid of devil you are afraid of praying against them you got to be able to open your mouth and pray and when you are doing your prayer make sure you do much of worship of god amen demon terrified are terrified when praise of god is sounded demons devil satan are always terrified at the praise and worship of god that was why he wanted to compete with that praise and worship that day he was asking christ to if he can bow down for him <laughs> hallelujah he will give him the entire whole world amen praise the lord because he know the value in praise and worship so when god is worshiped the devil trembles hallelujah you can win your battle easily by forming the habit of praying with preciseness in faith not just praying you pray in faith with preciseness 
How do you know your prayer is answered? By simple peace that comes around you. When you pray and you can't receive peace, you know for sure the prayer has not been said. Pray until peace stays in you. Hallelujah. Address the issue that you are going through. Don't let anybody oppress you in your place of work, in school, and do whatever they like. Amen. You can simply forgive and overlook, but when you get to the corner of your room, know how to talk to God. Amen. Put them on table. Amen. Put those demons walking in them on table. And say, Lord Jesus, here are the demons walking through this person. Please, Lord, forgive this one. Save his life. But this demon, show them who you are. Hallelujah. This demon, because if you don't do that, if you don't pray precise prayer, hallelujah, they will still come again. Because they will never get tired. And the day of their judgment has not come. When Christ comes, when they are cast into a everlasting lake of fire, they, I mean, when, when they are going to be born forever, when the final judgment comes, that's when uh, they are going to have a, a total perishing. But right now, they are at work in the world. Hallelujah. And you must put them into where they belong. By simply confronting the situation and dressing it. Hallelujah. Pray precisely about those demons and devils. Don't keep quiet. Don't say, oh, well, I just want to pray about it. I just want to... You need to pray about it. Amen. You need to open your mouth and pray about it and give thanks to God and worship God because the devil is terrified at the praise of God. Hallelujah. Psalm 149, verse 5 to 9. Psalm 149, verse 5 to 9. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Verse 6. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and two edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people to bind their kings with chains. And the noble without of iron to execute upon them judgment written. This honor of all is same. Praise he the Lord. When you praise God, God is found into action. Your weapon of warfare become activated, and God begin to win several battles for you. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 to 18. Ephesians 6, 11 to 18. Above all, taking the seed of faith. When you pray your prayer, must pray your prayer in faith. Amen. When you make a confession openly or secretly, must be in faith. Whatever is coming out of you, have to be in faith. You know what the Bible says? Whatever is not out of faith, is a sin. Amen. Which, with which, you will be able to quench all the fiery death of the wicked one. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So when you are making your prayer, ensure that your prayer, not only rich in worship and thanksgiving, must be rich in the word of God. The church of my word be, it shall not return unto me null void until it has accomplished that which I sent it. So God wants you to speak to him what he has to, spoken to you by his word. So you must be rich in the Holy Scripture. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all sin. Remember Jesus Christ, the devil came to confront him. And you remember, he used his word, the word of God. To defend himself. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, we are told that the devil left him for a while. We are not told that the devil left him permanently. Hallelujah. He left him for a while. So it's very important for you to be rich in the word of God. Anytime the devil can show up in his fiery that. All you need to do is to be rich in the word of God. And your prayer must be rich in the word of God. Your prayer must be rich in praising God. Your prayer must be rich in worshiping of God. Number five. What are these weapons of warfare? Lastly, number five. What are these weapons of warfare? The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is the powerful weapon to shut the enemy down. Because gospel itself is a self-defense by its own. Amen. By its own self, the gospel is a self-defense. Where do I get that from? Matthew 28 verse 20. Matthew 28 verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all things. Right? You must do the right thing. You teach them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Remember, if you don't speak to people what God commanded you, this protection will not be for you. Amen. Teaching them to observe all things. Amen. Whatsoever I've commanded you, the gospel must be preached from, this, from the scripture. Hallelujah. When you do that, see what happens. Say, Lo! I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So, when you preach the gospel, Christ stands by your side to defend you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you preach the last gospel, weapon of your warfare is to preach the gospel. 
Amen. If you want to win, win victory easily, ha! You need to be aggressive in gospel preaching. If enemy is trying to attack you over and over, put more energy, put more effort into preaching the gospel. The, the devil is going to get tired. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans 8, 31. What shall we then say to this? If God be for us, who can be against us? Rise up on your feet this morning. I begin to pray. I receive my weapon of warfare. I engage it to this morning. Every time I am confronted by the attack of the devil, help me, O oh Lord, to engage the weapon of this warfare. All my ignorance that have not let me be able to engage the weapon of warfare. Take it out. Take it away. Take it away. I open your mouth and declare. I engage the weapon of warfare. No longer will I live like an ignorant Christian. No more. No more will I live like an ignorant Christian. Hallelujah. Weapon of warfare. Please the gospel aggressively. Weapon of warfare. Praise. In, with supplication. Reaching the word of God. Praising and worshiping God. Hallelujah. Weapon of warfare. Weapon of warfare. Resting the devil by submitting to God. Living a life of holiness. Weapon of warfare. Living in peace with all men as much as it lies in me. Weapon of warfare. Ready to live in peace with people. Ready to forgive people. Let it go. Refusing to forgive the devil, Satan, and his demon. But be ready to give people love. I engage my weapon of warfare today. I've struggled over years. I've been tormented by the devil. I've been bad dream all time. Be not pressed and just taking it easy with the devil. So that I now realize it is my fault. Now I'm engaging my weapon of warfare to forgive people, but not to forgive devil. To forgive people, but not to forgive demon. To forgive people but not to forgive satan to show love to every mankind bringing them to christ to go out and preach the gospel hallelujah to live in peace with all men as much as lies in me now i see clearly what i need to do for you to stand in my defense hallelujah help me oh lord to engage this weapon help me oh lord to engage this weapon to live a life of total submission to you I live my life in complete holiness. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have the clear. Mighty God of heaven, we thank you this morning. When your word come, it come with fire. And I pray today and every ear that hear this word. And wherever this word will be sounded online. I pray for victory upon such oppressed. I pray for deliverance upon such possessed i pray for lifting up upon such obsessed i declare liberty for the captives in the name of jesus christ and every of your children that their eyes are open today may you begin to strengthen them to engage this weapon of warfare in every affairs of life they engage themselves in thank you lord and everyone anyone there this morning standing and say i'm even not yet a christian i pray for that one today as he confess in his mouth and believe that jesus is raised from the dead i pray respond to his confession respond to our confession and bring them to you thank you for saving this life blessed be your holy name in jesus name we have declared Thank you.